lovelies and welcome to the witch's cookery. Today we're doing another day in the life of a witch vlog and I'm super excited to take you along through my day providing you with tons of witchcraft inspiration, tips and tricks on wild foraging. We're gonna talk about forest bathing, we're going to do very yummy kitchen witchery and in the end I also have prepared a little green witch spell inspiration that might inspire you for your own witchcraft practice. But first, let's venture into the wild woodlands. I want to experience something with you that is called Shinrin Yoku or something to that extent because my Japanese is very much not up to par. However, it's a form of eco therapy that was developed in the 1980s in Japan and it translates to forest bathing. This is actually an amazing way to connect with natural energies and de-stress from everyday life. There have been done extensive studies on the topic how spending mindful time in the forest actually can help you battle a lot of diseases too, like it eases depression, it lowers high blood pressure, it can really combat heart diseases, uh, just a lot of things that are related to stress and living in a city. How do you take a forest bath? Let's see. A forest bath is nothing to be rushed, it's something to really enjoy and take the time. It can easily take several hours and before you even start it's really important to keep in mind that you want to fully immerse yourself in this bath, in this experience, so you would leave your phone and your camera and whatever else you usually bring with you at home. Forest bath is actually not so much focused on eternal experience but much more on external experience and your relationship with nature. Before you enter the forest you want to really let go of anything that is on your mind, that is stressing you out, that you have to think about, like mindfully enter the forest with basically a clean blank mind, with a clean slate. With forest bathing you don't have necessarily a trail that you follow. It's not like a hike where you go from A to B. It's more of an experience where you just wander around and you really listen to your feet. Just take the paths that speak to you that you want to explore. You can also go off the paths but please also keep your natural flora and fauna in mind. You don't want to disturb any animals that are breeding at the moment. You don't want to trample down newly planted little seedlings and trees or if you live in an area like me you don't want to run into a flock of boars. I'm pretty sure it's not called a flock of boars. How's that called? A, a gang? A gang of boars? My wildlife vocabulary in English is not as extensive. Eine Wildschweinrotte. That could actually result in a lot of stress and possibly death. But let's continue on with the relaxing stuff. So it's really just wandering around, going very slow. Not your normal walking speed where you just, you know, keep busy and active. Actually moving too fast is hindering the effects that the forest bath can have on you. You can even take off your shoes to feel the ground underneath. You can stop to feel the bark of a tree to smell the flowers and it's also important to take a lot of breaks in between to just stand still and it's a multi-sensorial experience where you feel, where you hear and especially where you smell. A lot of the studies concerning forest bathing actually focus on the effect of phytoncytes which are essential wood oils on your blood and on your immune system because exposure to them actually boosts white cells in your body which means you just don't get sick as often and you feel more vital. So the entire process just slows you down, you'll focus more on what is actually there, you will suddenly see all the little animals that are hiding in the moss and you will notice all the herbs and flowers that are growing everywhere so for every witch out there you can like look out for some cool things to forage but not while you're doing the forest bath, do it afterwards. 
And a typical forest bath actually then ends with a tea ceremony. Obviously, if you're in the woods, you can immediately take some leaves of an edible plant, a tree or herb and make your lovely tea there. Of course, you can do it like me and bring a little woodland snack that you have prepared before. Now we relax. because this video today is actually a collaboration with Wild Woodland Witch. If you are into witch vlogs, herbalism and slow living, I definitely urge you to check out that channel. It's absolutely fantastic. Heather has always felt a connection with nature, with the magical, and she recently actually discovered for herself the path of witchcraft and found herself home with that term. And now she based her channel around her newfound practice and gives you lots of ideas on how you can practice, especially if you focus on the elements, especially if you are a beginner witch. So now that we have gathered those fresh spruce shoots, I figured that we can maybe do a little bit of kitchen witchery together. What I personally love about wild foraging is that I feel that you can take the energy or certain kind of memories of a place back with you to your home with that plant and use it in your spellcraft, in your witchcraft or also obviously in kitchen witchery. My favorite thing in the entire world. You might have had similar experiences where you smell like a certain smell or taste a certain taste and it just like transports you back to that place or that moment in time and it triggers all those memories. And it's very similar when you cook with wild foraged herbs and make use of those aromas. I thought I will show you today how I make one of my favorite magical treats I call them my grounding toffees. As many of you know, grounding can not only be done through earthing or meditation, but it can also be done through eating things that are connecting you basically with your body, with your feelings and with your senses. Personally, I'm a stress eater. I want a sugary little treat when I'm stressed out, when I'm down, when I'm not feeling great. Not a great habit to have, but <laughs> let's make the best of it, shall we? Absolutely delicious sea salt caramel toffee, but I infuse it with the spruce shoots and with their calming energy and with just that forest aroma. By the way, I also shared my favorite recipe for spruce, ginger and rosemary ice cream over on my Patreon for all tiers. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
In witchcraft, most people work a lot with nature. If it's now in nature or just working with natural elements like herbs or crystals and obviously all that has to come from somewhere. In those times we're living now unfortunately humankind does take over nature and really kind of dominates it and a lot of like green areas are disappearing which in turn obviously disturbs the entire ecosystem. So a great way for any witch to kind of like try and balance that out in your own life is to let nature be wild. And I'll tell you more about that on the example of my garden, but you don't need a garden to do so. Now where I live in this tiny German town, it is very much frowned upon if your grass is not cut to the millimeter and everything is Super neat. To the dismay of my neighbors, I do not have such a garden. So occasionally when I look over to the gate, there are people there like... As long as you're fine with that, it's good, great, it's awesome. But F them because I have all the bees and all the butterflies, so... And some might say it's because I'm lazy and they might be right. But it's mainly also because I really value to let nature do her thing because she really knows what she's doing. That means I do have a ton of weeds growing in my garden, which are actually free witchcraft supplies and a lot of like healing plants that I would otherwise never have in here if I had a manicured grass and garden and I have a lot of wildflowers that are just very pretty to look at and of course it's also a great place for bees, for butterflies, for any kind of endangered species to come to my garden and create this little oasis. Now if you don't have a garden, I have lived in the city for many many years, you can still do your part. You can have one of those little balcony boxes that you can just put outside a windowsill and you just go and you buy seeds for a euro or a dollar or whatever your currency is and you're gonna plant this little wild space there. Just as a little ode or as a little gesture to nature basically. First of all you can use the things growing or you can even use that as a naturally growing seasonal altar space. That is actually a great offering to nature or nature spirits or whatever you believe in. I'm planning on doing a little smoke cleansing and burning of healing herbs later on so now let's first forage a little bit and while we do so I give you some tips on wild foraging. First of all why should you do it? It's super cheap, it's a great way to actually get to know your local plants and your local resources and even the folklore behind it and it's a great way to get out and really it's a great way to get out and really tune in with the natural seasonal energies. Any harvesting should ideally be done in the morning when the dew has just dried but it's not too hot yet the sun is not burning because the sun is actually burning the essential oils that have gathered in the plant out and it will be less aromatic and will just have less of all the healing benefits less of the fragrance if you want to use it for cooking or for soap making or for any kind of cottage witchery to that extent if you want to get a little bit more witchy with your harvesting you can stick to the lunar cycles there's actually an entire science behind that of blossom days, leaf days, root days, depending on in which phase the moon is and in what sign the moon is. And depending on your culture, for example in mine, we have harvesting days. Magic days that are said to make any kind of herb you pick there much more powerful in their healing powers or in their magical correspondences. An example for that would be the Frauendreisiger during August or around Litha or Midsummer. What else to keep in mind if you find a really good batch of something never take everything maximum take a third from some plants even less because otherwise you will harm them and they can't regrow and also keep in mind you're not the only witch on the planet there are also other people there are also other animals only ever pick what you really 100% are sure you have distinguished correctly in order to do so get a local plant guide or learn from an herbalist in another video i will tell you all about drying and storing herbs and maybe we do a little diy if you want to know more about wild foraging check out the video linked above.
Now this was a lovely long day of witching and <laughs> I'm pretty exhausted now but I actually had a little spell or a little ritual plan for tonight now that I have all my gathered herbs and a lot of people use certain herbs or mostly sage for smoke cleansing but there are obviously many more reasons to burn herbs for example in my culture and in the old rural folk traditions certain herbs were used for certain purposes you famously have the weather herbs you have the protection herbs you have the cleansing herbs you have a couple of herbs to evoke certain kind of feelings and moods or even an immune response from your body the healing herbs and now i've gathered red clover forget-me-nots and ground ivy so in the traditions here in germany ground ivy is a very strong protective and cleansing herb to burn in all kinds of like festivities around the year and red clover and forget-me-nots are both used to deal with any kind of emotional turmoil or grief or heartbreak and all these kinds of things that play more on a heart level the reason why i picked those is that i have been dealing with some stuff recently that i kind of want to let go i just want to cleanse my emotions so to say from that and move on so i did design a little ritual around that and maybe it can also serve you as an inspiration if you are dealing with similar feelings personally i don't often burn herbs i much rather use the sieve method where I just put them on a little mesh <laughs> kind of thingy and have them over the flame so all the essential oils basically are set free and it's a very soft and much healthier way of burning herbs. Now I have closed the blinds I shut the shade witchy shenanigans. I do hope you have a most beautiful day and I see you very soon. Bye!